All right, this is fourth grade, module six, lesson 10. And in this lesson, we're gonna continue comparing decimals, but this time we're really gonna focus on two models. We're gonna focus on the area model and we're gonna focus on the number line. So let's get started. So on this set of problems, we're being asked to use the area model in order to compare our values. And so the idea is uh, we're gonna start with this first one right here. And so we're going to look at that 0 0.19. And what does that mean? Well, 0 0.19, we need to remember that that is one-tenth plus nine hundredths. All right? And then the 0 0.3, what does that mean? Well, that means three-tenths, and there's nothing else. So if we wanted to, we could call it 0 hundredths if we really wanted to. So we're going to use these pieces of information to shade in our area. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And the idea is first, we've got right here, 0 0.19. So that means we're going to shade in 1 tenth plus 9 hundredths. So 1 tenth is going to look like, boom, there's our 1 tenth. Now, what is, how are we going to shade in the 9 hundredths? Well, what we need to do is we need to cut this tenth right here into 10 pieces. So we're going to cut that up into 10 pieces. So I'm going to cut it in half, and then I'm going to cut each half into 5 pieces. And because we are doing, we, we need to shade in 9 hundredths, I'm going to zoom in, and we need to shade in, whoa, zoom in and shade in nine hundredths. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is our model for 0 0.19. Now we need to model our 0 0.3, which right here is three tenths and no extra hundredths. And so Let's, let's do that. We're going to zoom in a little bit, and we are going to shade in three tenths. So that's one, two, and three. So there is our shading in for three tenths, and it, that immediately makes it super easy to compare. We can see that this only has one tenth, while this has three tenths. Case closed. We're done. It doesn't matter that we have these extra nine tenths here because these three tenths beat this one tenth and case closed. We are now done. So what symbol are we gonna use? We're gonna use the less than symbol because the smaller end is on the small number and the bigger end is on the big number. That's another way to use your little mnemonic to, for figuring out how that does, uh, how which, which symbol to use instead of just saying, well, the alligator eats the bigger one. We could say this smaller side goes with the smaller number Bigger side goes with the bigger number. Now we're being asked to use a number line to compare our decimal. So what we're going to do, let's do 18 and 18.19. Uh, so 18.19. So really, since we, we're comparing 18 and 18, really all we need to look at is the decimal portion, 0 0.19 and 0 0.3. And that 0 0.19, we need to remember, that's one-tenth plus nine-hundredths, whereas this is just three-tenths. Well, that's, that's exactly like the problem we just did, because it's the same, ends up being the same. But let's, let's show what that looks like on this number line. So you'll notice our scale. Here's zero, uh, 18 and one-tenth. Here's 18 and 2 tenths. This is saying 18 and 1 tenth plus 9 hundredths. So these little dashes are actually the 9 hundredths. So 18.19 is going to go right here. 18. <coughs> so that's 18 and 1 tenth. And then 18 and 1 tenth plus 9 hundredths is right here. So I'm going to write that down. 18.19. And now, where does 18.3 go? Well, we can see it. It's right here. 18.3 is right there. And since 18.3 is on the right 
compared to 18.19, uh, that tells you that 18.3 is larger than 18.19. So our symbol, in this case, would be the less than symbol. Now here, in our mind, we can use any technique we want, the area model, tape diagram, the number line, and what we're going to do is we just need to enter in the symbol, the less than, the greater than, or the equals symbol. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to imagine what this picture would look like, and we can see that uh, in the ones place we've got two and a two, so right now they're kind of located in a very similar place. Now we're going to look at the tenths place, and here is where you're going to see the difference. We see six tenths here, we see five tenths there, automatically that makes this number 2.68 larger than the 2.54. Oh, if we want to go uh, right here, boy, case closed immediately. We're comparing the ones place with the ones place, and we see that nine is larger than seven. We're done. We can immediately know that 9.28 is larger than two, uh, 7.28. And then, oh, let's do this one right here. So let's compare ten, tens. It's 110 versus 110. So it's tied. And then let's look at the ones place. And we've got three ones versus three ones. So it's still tied. Now let's look at the tenths place. And we've got one-tenth versus one-tenth. It's still tied. And then we see that this guy has no hundredths. What about this guy? Well, he has no hundredths either because they didn't even write it down. So what does that tell you about these two numbers? It tells you that they are equal. Another way we could think of that is we know that 13.1 is the same thing as 13 and 1 tenth. Now 13.10, 13.10 is the same thing as 13 and 10 hundredths, which if we divide both the numerator and the denominator by 10, then we get 13 and 1 tenth, which is the exact same answer right here. So that tells us they're equal. Another way we could think of that, let's think of that 13 and 1 tenth. I mean, 13.10. What does this mean? Well, this means, I'm going to ignore this portion right now. Let's just look at the decimal. That decimal says you have 1 tenth, and this means you have 0 hundredths. So, 1 tenth. Done. That's another way to show that it's equal to 13.1. So we got a lot of ways for our students to be thinking about it, not to mention they could have used the area model or the number line model. More of the same, only this time they're throwing in the unit form of these numbers. So 57 tenths, we learned, is 5.7. So that means these two guys are equal. Oh, let's, uh, let's look at this one right here. So let's see, this is 8.39, 8 and 8 holes, 8 ones, 3 tenths, and 9 hundredths, all right? And, but here, we've got 8 holes, 8 ones, but this right here, 39 tenths, so I'm going to decompose this to 8, and, and this becomes 3 and 9 tenths. Because 39 tenths is equal to 3 holes and 9 tenths. So all together, this is equal to 11 and 9 tenths. So that tells us that the number on the right is larger than the number on the left. Oh, last one. We could do, we could do this. 3 tenths and 22 hundredths. Well, three tenths, <clears throat> well, for, let's take a look at 22 hundredths first. So if we look at 22 hundredths and we're thinking about a place value chart, 
So you got your hundredths, you've got your tenths, you've got your decimal, and you've got your ones. Now, if you had 22 hundredths, that means you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 1, 2. So there is our 22 hundredths. But we have to remember <coughs> that we can take these 10 hundredths <coughs> and they equal 1 tenth. And then we can say that these 10 hundredths equal 1 tenth. So these get exchanged. These got exchanged. So what do we end up with? We end up with two tenths and two hundredths left over. Two tenths, two hundredths. And so really, this is 0 0.22, and this is 0 0.3, and we can see that three tenths is larger than two tenths. Done! That means the symbol is the greater than symbol. And that wraps up 4th grade Module 6, Lesson 10. We're using the area model and the number line to compare decimals.